Hey there, Ryan the Ride Mechanic. Welcome to the Ryan the Ride Mechanic Show. Today I'm doing a response video real quick. Uh, someone contacted me this morning talking about, uh, have you seen the support crack at Carowinds? And I was like, no. And then I looked into it and I want to talk about it real quick because that's something you don't see all the time. So let's get into it. Now get ready, here we go. <laughs> Okay, so at the Carowinds Park, they had the Fury 325, I think it was. Not that familiar with it, honestly. Um, they, had it, uh, they had a catastrophic failure on one of the supports. And it sounds a lot worse than it is, but it basically just means the support cracked really bad, cracked in half. Um, this type of thing doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen occasionally. And I was, so I went to look at these videos and see what it was, and... I, I poked around one video and I thought it was pretty interesting, so I looked into it. Whoa, that's going to be a problem. So let's talk about what you do next. Obviously, the first thing you're going to do is shut the ride down because obviously it can't operate like that. Um, was anyone in real danger or anything like that on there? Glad people didn't die? Um, no, it's not that bad at all. Um, most of the time, those supports, you could probably get them uh, about three. Let's see, you can have two or three of them missing in one area of track and the ride won't care at all. Everything still works just fine, still just as safe. So, so what's that there for? That is mainly there for your longevity of the ride. So without those there, it puts more stress on the rest of them. Um, let's do a high-tech rendering drawing. And uh, we're, we're gonna use some very high-tech, sophisticated equipment so with the sophisticated design aids that I have at my disposal, I was able to do this rendering. I put it on the refrigerator afterwards. It's so cool. I put it on the fridge. It's going to be great. Anyways, all the technology out there, this is what they're doing right now. They're drawing pictures of stuff and pointing to where it is. Why do I know that? Because I know these things, trust me. So what happened is on this support right here, you have this 45 and a vertical. The track is mounted, let's just say it's right about here, right? What happened is when they weld this thing together, the stresses between this weld right here and this weld right here caused the material to pull. And this right there, that little guy is your high stressed area. That is in the heat affected zone on the toe of the weld, that is where a crack will form. Now what's gonna happen is that midway through the season, the furthest away from NDT possible, which is around now, what happens is the hairline crack developed and wasn't seen. Now if these things happen fast, which they can, it will literally just rip open. If they happen slow, eventually it'll send an indicator out, basically in the form of rust. You'll start seeing rust coming down there. But this one basically went like that out the other side. I know, my pictures are so awesome, aren't they? I love it. Anyways, and when the train passed by, you could see this whole thing goes out that way. Now. I almost guarantee what they're doing right now is they're taking the ride down and they're calling in two people. They're calling in an NDT team, non-destructive testing, to come out and check all the track and supports on the entire ride. They're going to be hyper-focused in that area because in that area that's already weakened because of that rupture. The track supports on either sides are going to have, uh, they're more prone to cracking in that area. And then the second 
phone call they're going to make is to a surveying company. And they're going to pull out the original prints, blueprints for the ride. And they're going to say, here's the foundation level heights where everything's supposed to be. And then the survey company is going to go out and basically reshoot all the foundations and find out where they are versus where they were. So this is all stuff that most parks know everything about. And I could almost guarantee you, almost, what you're going to find is that this footer that this guy attaches to down there, this footer has sunk down in the ground. And then that caused stress this way. You got to remember, the stress, you can't see it on these rides. These things have huge amounts of stress in them all over the place, which the track and supports are meant, meant to handle. But when the piers start moving in the ground, they can't necessarily tell you that. There might be signs around it, might be, might not be. But anyways, that took that high stressed area right in the middle of that joint right there and made it much worse. And then as each time the train went around, it pushes on that and caused a fracture and then it got bigger and bigger. And then because of the sinking, my guess completely, but knowing how welds and stuff fail, it, that pier probably sunk. So that pier sunk down and it caused that to be overstressed and ripped the thing clean apart. Now, the footers on the, uh, the supports on either side have to be inspected. After a lot of time putting these points into my computer aided simulation, I have come up with this. I'm going to get so many comments on this, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> Anyways, so here's a support that failed. I also find this is the easiest. So, you know, sometimes, well, I am a firm believer of the KISS method keep it simple, stupid. Hmm, there you go. So, here's the one that failed right here, right? Down there. And the ones to either side are the ones that are going to be taking the extra stress now every time the train runs by that track. So right where those horizontal plates join that vertical tube in that corner, and then right where those horizontal plates join the backbone to the track right there. In those four areas, those are going to be the high areas of concern. And then they're going to shoot level foundations on these piers all around this area and all inside this area here. And then they're going to NDT everything else. What's going to happen in the background? They're on the phone with the manufacturer, explaining to them what happened. The manufacturer asked for the tag number. That's the tag number of that vertical support beam right there. And then the manufacturer is going to try to farm out somebody to refabricate that support column and this is going to be only after they verify that the pier is or is not in the right location um, i'd be willing to bet there's two ways to go about it when a pier sinks you can uh, put in alternate piers to either side and make a substructure to support that because you already know you have ground movement in the area so that's really bad got to stop that or you can literally fabricate a longer support. Like literally, if they were to remake that, they could remake that leg just a hair longer according to what the support is at this point in time and get it back up and running. Um, there's no telling. I know a lot of things right now on YouTube are like, how long is it gonna be down? It's like, there's no telling. Um, they could say, well, we're not gonna do anything until we put a new support in there, and then at this point it could be down for the rest of the season. Easily. Easily rest of the season. Probably open back up next year just fine. If the ground measurements come back and the piers are in the correct location and everything is fine, and it was perhaps just a defect, the crack that wasn't caught during NDT, um, as long as they have sufficient NDT evidence to say that, yes, we've checked everything else and everything else is fine, the manufacturer might, their call, the manufacturer might sanction a repair. But because the tube was completely ripped in half, I really, 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 really doubt it that the manufacturer is going to sanction a repair. That's not to say that company can contact an engineering firm 
tell them what happened and the engineering firm can say, yeah, uh, double penetrate, weld things back together, 100%. We're going to put fish plates and doublers over the top of it and more I-beam around the thing to support, support it. And we're going to weld it back together and open it up, which should take a couple of weeks to do maybe uh, by the time you get all the engineering approved. Um, in the meantime, while a new support is being fabricated, could be. There's a lot to, lot to know, but uh, yeah, that sort of thing really sucks. Um, I've never had something that catastrophic fail like that before. But uh, you know, the first question is always, "Well, is it safe? You know, was a train about to fly off the track?" It's like, no, the train was not about to fly off the track. No one was on the verge of getting injured. You could completely remove that support pillar probably run the ride for another year or two before you started seeing more stress cracks in the area and then you're into track fatigue and you're into track replacement that's no good that's the reason why those pillars are so close to each other is to prevent fatigue so mm, honest opinion yep yeah, might be down the rest of this year just my opinion though nothing really to back that up um it really depends on fabrication schedules and what they find when they go through and check all their structure. And of course, anything that's like that joint design anywhere else, they're probably gonna not just be visually looking at it, they're going to be taking paint off and mag particle testing that to make sure there's no cracks in it. Anyways, I wanted to make this real quick. I don't normally do this type of stuff, but I figured, hey, might as well, because I was looking to draw something and now I have two drawings to put on the fridge. It's gonna be a pretty good day for me. Anyways, I'm Ryan the Ride Mechanic. Like and subscribe. I hope you have drawings on your fridge at home. Take care. Bye.